Hey kids. Okay, today I'm doing a bonus video. And this is um, something Mrs. Hewlett, I think is her name. And she had said, hey, you said you were going to do the uh, rules for simplifying fractions. And I was like, oh, I got to do, I have a poster for it, but I need to put the poster on paper so you guys can create your own fun poster. And so it's really very, very simple. Um, and so I just, for years, uh, even when I taught third grade, I had the same rules because we still had fractions uh, in third grade and th they still needed to know how to simplify them. But for kids, most of what you'll find in the book is that there are some patterns. And so you wanna look for these patterns. These are my rules to address the patterns that you will find in early elementary, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, but it goes on even in sixth grade. And if you get stuck or don't know uh, your factors very well, it gets a little bit hard. So this is kind of like a how to break it down. It's really so simple. Rule one is what comes up the most often. And so rule one is, I call them doubles, okay, doubles. It's it's not a double of anything except that from the top to the bottom, it is doubled. And so this is the one and this is the double. And so you just wanna look, look for doubles. Look for doubles. They're everywhere. And so one half is the lowest or simplest form of a double. And so a double might be two fourths because it's doubled on the bottom. This is one and this is doubled. Three sixths. This is one of them, this is doubled. So times two, this times two, that's what the double is. And I just call them doubles. I don't know why, I just thought if that's what it seemed like to me. It's like, oh, it's just doubled on the bottom. And so you wanna look for these. They'll be everywhere. You could have like 11, 20 seconds, and this is still doubled. You could have 15 thirtieths. This is times two, 15 times two, 30. And so these in the early elementary grades are everywhere. If you can find a fraction that whatever the number on top is, is times two on the bottom, that's a double. You can simplify it in once, it's just equal to one half. It's equal to one half. Why? Because you would divide the both numbers by the top number. So this is essentially 15 thirtieths divided by 15 fifteenths, okay? And this is equal to one half. But 11 20 seconds divided by 11 elevenths would be one half. And 4 eighths divided by 4 fourths would be one half. And 3 sixths divided by 3 thirds would be one half. And so on. So really, all I'm saying is just look for these types of fractions called doubles. So that's the one that comes up absolutely the most. It, the bookmakers, it's like, thanks. Thanks for making them kind of easy. It does help you kind of think about uh, what is this number times two. So you start kind of hunting for them. Rule two. All right, this is, again, just look for this. Even numbers are all divisible by two. And again, if you know what even numbers are, and pretty much by the time I think out of third grade, you ought to know what even numbers are and odd numbers, all even numbers are divisible by two. And so you can take any weird, I mean like two fourths, that's too easy because it's a double. So take something like uh, four twentieths, okay? And you can just make up any even number. Now, if you don't know any common factors for that, then you could say, well, I could divide both by two. And I could do four divided by two and get two, and 20 divided by two is 10. And you might recognize, oh, hey, I have, I have another set of even numbers. But what this step does for the little kiddos is that it takes the 
big numbers, which they may not know a factor of this, and it gets it down to, oh, well, I could still simplify this, and they start to recognize what uh, is divisible, and then they say, I can divide that again, and 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now, this is going to be also in Rule 3. We can talk about that there. But for some, you may not understand why 34 58 is divisible by 2. Now, let's say I don't really know what any factors are of this. Like, that's just way too high. So just take each one and bring it down to a simpler amount. And again, it could be anything. It could be like 26, 80 seconds. But if, if they're both even, then they are divisible by two. So start by dividing by two. And that's really what you do. And you can keep dividing by two as long as you have even numbers. They're all divisible by two. Okay, and so two fits into three one time. You may have to set it up if you have a super big fraction, which you probably won't in fifth grade, but you may have to carry it over. And so 34 in half would be 17. And this one, again, you have leftovers. Five divided by two is two, and you have one left over. And then I get a prime number, you know, two prime numbers because you can't get anything um, to multiply and get 17 or 29. So it helps if you can just look at even numbers, two, four, six, eight, and zero. Those are all even numbers if they end with two, four, six, eight, or zero, and then divide by two, and just divide as far as you can. That's the trick, divide as far as you can, because this isn't simplest form yet, so you keep going. Keep going. Rule three, this is the final rule Rule three, and this really covers everything, and this is kind of where the book goes, uh, but they want kids to start with this one, and it's like, mm, they don't really need to because this comes up so much, and this is always a big helper for kids who don't understand all the facts or don't have them memorized. So what you want to do here is find a common divisor. And the common divisor is any number that can divide into both the top and the bottom. Now, if you find the greatest common factor, the GCFF equals the greatest common, there's that word again, factor, a factor is the number you multiply. If you find the greatest common factor in one step, you will have simplest form in one step. So let's take that 4 20ths again as an example. Okay, now a factor is a number you can multiply and get that number. So if I was to choose the GCF of 4, okay, which is a greater common factor than 2. Now 2 is a common divisor. That's why I could simplify 4 20ths with 2 here and get 2 tenths. But 4 is the greatest common factor for 4 20ths. And so when I divide 4 by 4, I get 1. And when I divide 20 by 4, I get 5. And so here I have 1 fifth in one step, whereas I did it up here, and it took two steps. So the idea behind rule 3 is that this is kind of like that's the end. There's nothing else you can do besides find a common divisor. If you find the greatest common factor in one step, then it's really uh, much faster. So let's take another one like 12 20ths. Kids might recognize, oh gosh, you know, this is divisible by 2. But what if you also see that it's divisible by 4? I should have used a different one, but look, here we are at 4. So 12 divided by 4 is 3, and 20 divided by 4 is 5. And so we have this one step simplifying so that 20, sorry, 12 20ths is equivalent to 3 fifths. So I'm getting equivalent um, fractions by finding this common divisor. Now, what if um, I have like 6 eighths? Okay. And... Uh, Oh, sorry, 6 18ths. 
What if I have six eighteenths? I'm looking at across the room at my poster. It's like super far away now. Okay, now if I started with um, two, okay, that would be even numbers if I don't know any other factors. Um, if I start with three, then that's a common divisor, okay, because three goes into six and it also goes into 18. So I, I can start with a couple different numbers here when you, the higher you get with the even numbers, you're usually going to have multiple factors. So you'll have many choices for common. The most, the best one is to find the greatest common factor. So 6 is the greatest common factor here. 6 divided by 6 is 1, and 18 divided by 6 is 3. You can still look at 6 eighteenths and say, well, what if I want to simplify by dividing by 3? Okay, well, you can. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 18 divided by 3 is 6. And so you end up with 2 sixths, but then you have to go back to rule 2. So if you don't recognize that 6 is the greatest common divisor, or the greatest common factor, then you have to go back to rule 2 and see that these are both still even. And so this isn't simplest form. It is equivalent. It's just not simplest. And 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. And so this is equivalent to this, and it's equivalent to that. So fractions have more than one equivalent, and you can go up and you can go down. But those are the basic rules. <laughs> I call them rules because it just works out for the early elementary grades. Look for the doubles. Anything that is doubled from the top to the bottom is equal to one half. One half is just the end. This is equal to one half. This is equal to one half. They're all equal to one half. And so that's what makes the doubles easy. So you look for those. They are everywhere. Rule two, even numbers are divisible by two. So do it. Start dividing. Rule three, if you get to the point where you can find a larger uh, factor to divide, then start dividing with those larger factors. And so those are my fun rules for simply simplifying fractions in fifth grade and in fourth grade in third grade and I hope you find them helpful and you guys are amazing uh click subscribe if it's helpful and I'll see you on the next video bye